are going to talk about evangelism and missions. Evangelism and missions are, are two core values that are extremely important here at Faith Chapel. You know, something that Faith Chapel has been known for for years is the giving into missions, that we have supported missions, that we have not only encouraged and supported missions, but we have sent many into the missionary field. Uh, we have sent uh, those out to plant churches. We have sent many people into different parts of the world and even into America to plant churches and to um, do missionary work to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with those who need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, uh, Jesus, uh, you know, the Bible says that until every ear has heard, until everyone has heard the gospel, Jesus will not return. You know that? And I'm looking for Christ to return, so I want to share the gospel. Amen? I want to share the message of Jesus Christ. I want to share what Jesus is saying and what Jesus is doing. So turn over it to Matthew 28. And this is such a popular scripture. Matthew 28, verse 18 uh, through 20. And in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, it says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. He said, go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel. This is a commandment of God. And many times we refer only to this scripture. But I'm just going to use, we're not going to use a lot of scripture, but we're going to use the four gospels today just to emphasize this, that Jesus has called each and every one of us to missionary work. You know that? Every one of us are missionaries. What? Yeah. Every one of us are missionaries, whether you're at home, whether you're here, whether you're in your vehicle, no matter where you're at, God has called you to be a missionary. Now, I didn't say God has called you to go to another land. I said God has called you to be a missionary. And what's the definition, definition of a missionary? Very simple, one who is sent. That's the definition of a missionary, is one who is sent. And Jesus, right here, as he's speaking to his disciples, he sent them. And are you, I just want to ask you, are you a disciple of Christ? Are you a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ? I can't hear you. Okay, there we go. Amen. I didn't hear you on Facebook. Are you a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. You are. And so God has called a, each and every one of us. Yes, I, I know. that. Anyway. So, hallelujah. So God has called each and every one of us to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, but not just a disciple, but to be a missionary. And the very definition of a missionary is one who is sent to go and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. One who goes and shares the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's very simple. And here in Matthew 18, he said, Go ye therefore into all the world. Go ye and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's go over to Mark. Mark, uh, and Mark, he, ex he expands, he expounds upon this uh, same account uh, kind of in a different way. And in Mark 16, he says, in verse 14, he says, Later Jesus appeared to the eleven as they were eating. He rebuked them for their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe. Wow. Stubborn refusal to believe. Those who had seen him after he had risen. So they didn't believe those who Jesus had said. Do you know who the first evangelist was in the New Testament? Do you know who the first evangelist was after Christ was risen? It was Mary. That's right. It was a woman. And everybody's up in arms. Oh, women can't teach. And oh, women can't do this. And don't you know what the scripture says? Well, I want to tell you, Jesus sent a woman to be the first evangelist in the New Testament after he was risen. So, yes, hallelujah. So let's not get caught up in who's sharing and who has the ability and who can and who can't. Let's get caught up in the message that we have and the hope that we have within us and let's share that with those around us, whether they be neighbors, co-workers, whether they be somebody we come in contact with at, at Walmart or at Target or wherever you, are, you shop. Let's, 
let's uh, get caught up in the message and in the hope that Jesus Christ has given us. Hallelujah. And so in Mark 16, 14, he says in verse 15, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. I read to you earlier out of eight, uh, Romans uh, 8, uh, verse 1, that said, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who believe in Christ Jesus. The condemnation is not uh, to those who believe in Christ. And we want to give freedom. We want to give life. We want to give the hope of Jesus Christ that he has given us to all those around us. If you have this wonderful, wonderful gift, don't you want to share it with those who, ha who have need of it? Don't you want to share it with those who have, have been given have that, that need to understand and need to be given this opportunity to love God, to know God? So one of, the, one of the core values is evangelism here at Faith Chapel. What is evangel evangelism? Evangelism is very simple. Evangelism is sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with all those who need to hear it. Some have heard, some haven't heard. And maybe your, your story, you know, each one of you have a story. Whether you're on Facebook or you're here live, each one of you have a story. And that story is, the part of that story is the testimony of Jesus Christ in your life. And we want to share that story that God has given us. We want to share the story of Jesus Christ in our life. The story that he has placed within us. Each one of you have a story of how, where you came from. How God has transformed you. How God has moved in your life. That's evangelism. Some people think you got to go to school to, be, to get involved in evangelism and you have to study the word of God over and over and over again. Yeah, that's important. You do need to do that. But we each have our own story. And, and evangelism is as simple as you sharing the story of Jesus Christ in your life. The evangelism is as easy and as, as simple as you sharing what God has done for you with somebody else. And God has called us to share that story. God has called us to rise up in evangelism as a core value here at Faith Chapel, to rise up in evangelism and not be silent. What's that little children's song, this little light of mine? I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel? No. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. What is shining in you today? Is it the light of Christ? Or is it your own ideas, your own spirit, and your own life? God has called us to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with everyone around us. And our very lives, the very way we live, the very way we, we conduct business, the very way we conduct our lives, should be a testimony and should be sharing the light of Jesus Christ in the earth. And, you know, it's been said many times around here. I've heard it said, Pastor Joel has said it, you know, uh, and it was a quote from a, a famous person. I can't think of who said it now, but share the gospel every day, and if you must, use words. I may have gotten that wrong a little bit, but that's basically what they're saying. Share the gospel every day, but if you must, use words. Use words, uh, but one thing I want to encourage you is, if you, we don't share what the gospel is, is, if we don't talk about what Jesus has done in our lives, it's great for people to look at somebody and say, I know you're a Christian. I know there's something different about you. But until you begin to share with them what is different, they're not going to know what that difference is. Oh, maybe they just say, oh, he's just a good person. Oh, he's just a good person, and, 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 and he does good things every, every day, and, and he's, he never cusses, and he, and he, never, does, he never gets angry, and, and, he, and he never, uh, you know, throw down and have a fit, and he never, he never does anything negative. He never cheats. He never lies. He never runs with the girls who do. But the reality of it is, is where have we talked? Where have we spoken? Where have we shared what God, who God is and what he's done in our lives? God has called us to speak 
to share the gospel. It's wonderful to live the gospel, and we've got to live the gospel, but we've also got to begin to share the gospel of Jesus Christ too. We've got to communicate what God has done in our lives. Turn with me. Uh, let's see. Uh, yes, turn with me. Let's go ahead. Well, let's finish this. I'm sorry. Uh, verse 17. And these signs will accompany those who believe in my name. In my name they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hand on the sick people and they will get well. I'm not telling you to run out and look for a snake. I'm not telling you to run out and look for a vial of poison. I'm telling you that no matter where we find ourselves, God is there with us. And if we are the saved and we are the ones in the kingdom of God that God has called us out, we are the called out ones, the church, we have given our lives over to Jesus Christ. He said these things will follow us, that we will pray for the sick, we will cast out demons, we will pray for the sick, they will be healed. And if we run into poison or snakes, it doesn't matter, our faith in God will still keep us whole and alive in the kingdom of God and in life. These are testimonies. These are not things for us to go out and say, oh, you know, it's kind of like some people, they get a new ring and they say, oh, look at my ring. And they want to show off this new thing they got. And so many times in the, in the kingdom of God, people, uh, people want to show off what they can do. Oh, I can pray for the sick, or I can cast out this demon, or I can do this, or I can do that. It's not a show it's a life. It's not a show. It's not the, our ability to do something. That's not why Jesus said that. He said these signs will follow. Not you will brag about what you can do, but this will follow you as you follow me is what he's saying. You will heal the sick. You will cast out demons. You will live even though poison may be there. I'm telling you, even in this coronavirus situation, God has given us life and we don't have to fear. We just walk in faith. We walk in the faith of God. Yes, we do take precautions. Yes, we do walk in wisdom. Yes, we do understand what we need to do as believers and as human beings. But that doesn't mean we walk in fear. It means God walks before us and we follow after him. And as we follow after him, we declare his glories in all the earth. We declare his glories and what he has done in you, in me, in each and every one of us. We share the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, uh, the, the excitement and the joy of God should be oozing out of us. It should be just like, uh, just uh, emulating from us. We should be excited about knowing Jesus Christ and the salvation that he has given us. Y'all, we, we have been given life and life more abundantly. That is excited. We don't have to live in death. We don't have to live in fear. We don't have to live in the destruction of the world. As long as we're following him and running after him, I'm telling you, life is ours and ours evermore. But we live, we live like, oh, woe is me. Oh, woe is me. And Jesus has said, you don't have to say woe is me anymore. Jesus has said, now live in my life, now live in my hope, now live in my peace, now live in my joy. If you don't have joy today, call on Jesus. If you don't have peace today, call on Jesus. If you don't have life today, call on Jesus. If you don't have health today, call on Jesus. He is our hope and he is our life and he is our truth and he is our love. He is the hope in this world and in this season in our lives. Go with me over to Luke, Luke 24. And this is a lot of scripture, but I think it's important to read it for this. Luke 24, hallelujah. Luke 24, verse 36, it says, While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be unto you. Now this is the, this is the disciples. They were in the upper room, and the door was locked. There was no way for somebody to get in. And all of a sudden, Jesus appears in the room. I would need him to say, peace be unto you. 
<laughs> right? I mean, I would need him to say, peace be unto you in that situation. I'm there with a group of people, and all of a sudden this guy shows up in the middle of, of this group and didn't even open up the door. I would need him to say, peace be unto you, okay? They, uh, they, were, startled. they were startled and frightened, obviously, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, why are you troubled? And why do, you, do doubts rise in your minds? I mean, isn't that God? Isn't that Jesus? Why, do you, why, why are you troubled? Why do doubts rise in your mind? Why, why are these things rising up within you that I have already overcome and I have already spoken peace to? He says, look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself, this is Jesus speaking, Touch me and see, a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see, I have. This is so important uh, right here. And then it says, when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. Then it goes on to say, keep going, and while they, were still not, uh, while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, do you have anything to eat? This is interesting. I find this so interesting. Keep going. They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. I've never known of a spirit or a ghost eating. I've never known of something that's not of flesh to eat. Jesus not only came, revealed himself to them, but he showed that he was risen in the flesh. Very important. Many people say that somebody stole Jesus' body or somebody came and took his body. They didn't steal his body. He gave up his body, but he rose in the flesh, not just in the spirit. <coughs> Excuse me. He rose in the flesh. He, he, he arose. He was uh, resurrected in the flesh. It was not just a spiritual resurrection. It was a fleshly resurrection. And we should lay hold of this. We should get excited about it. Because us being Jesus Christ, being resurrected in the flesh, means that our lives are resurrected. Means that as long as we are in Christ, we can live and we can live life abundantly. We don't have to worry about fear and death. We don't have to worry about the destruction of this earth because it will pass us. It will not lay a hold of us as long as we are found in him and he is found in us hallelujah this is something to get excited about this is something to speak and joy about and to declare his praises and in 44 he says and he said to them this is what i told you while i was still with you everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of moses and the prophets and the psalms he said i came not to abolish the law but to fulfill the law then he opened his mind so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. What is the gospel? The gospel is the repentance and the forgiveness of sins. Very simple. The, the gospel is the story of Jesus Christ in your life and in my life. And he said in, vo in verse 30, uh, 48, you are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. By the Holy Spirit, we have been clothed with power on high to share the gospel as a core value of Faith Chapel. Evangelism and missions uh, as two core values, really, of Faith Chapel. Evangelism and missions have been, has been imparted to us. We have been called out to share the gospel everywhere we go and every, in every situation that we're in that we have the opportunity to, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. It doesn't have to be something that you force. It's just something. Something that flows out of your life. Go with me over to John. John 20, uh, verse 21 and through 23. And Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins... Their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. 
Last week, we began to make some declarations. And while we, were, while we were just speaking, it was Declaration Sunday. And while we were just speaking, I, I, we, I began to make declarations over Faith Chapel and over 2021 in our lives. And I did not realize that as I began to make those declarations, I actually made 12 declarations that Sunday, that day, while, while speaking the word of the Lord. And I just want to share a couple of those declarations. And I went back and I, I printed out these declarations. We're going to put them out there for everyone. And, and these declarations, it's is it's interesting that nine of the 12 were about evangelism and missions i believe that 2021 is going to be a year of evangelism and missions if we will give our lives over to god at that level 2021 god is calling us up and he's calling us out he's calling us higher and it's going to be a year of action in 2021, he's saying, God, uh, I am saying and I am declaring God's kingdom come and God's will be done in 2021. There's another declaration that the church will rise up and be the church, be who we're supposed to be in 2021. 2021 is going to be a year of outreach. It's going to be a year that we are beginning, uh, we are becoming a spring of fresh water to those we come in contact with. It's going to be a year of evangelism, a year of revival, God pouring out His Spirit. It's going to be a year of missions, and it's going to be a year of a greater worldview. Why am I saying this? Why am I making these declarations? One, I believe God has put it on my heart. He has put it in my spirit that that's what He desires to do in 2021. But let me tell you what, God is speaking this right now because He is encouraging you, He is strengthening you, and He is challenging you to rise up and make this a year of evangelism in your life. Set some goals. Set a goal that every month, at least one, one, one person a month, you're going to lead to, the, to Jesus Christ. You're going to lead them to Jesus Christ at least one person a month. If that's too much, how about that you're going to at least share the gospel with at least five people every month. Share the gospel of Jesus Christ. What is the gospel? The gospel is very simple. The gospel is a, the narrative of Jesus Christ. It's the story of God's love through and in Jesus Christ. His only begotten Son. The gospel is the hope, the life, and remission of sins that only Jesus can give. The gospel is the explanation that only believing in Jesus Christ is where salvation, forgiveness, and freedom are found. The gospel is your story, the story of Jesus Christ in you. That's the gospel. The story of what Jesus has done in your life. Start there and then let it expound. Then let God reveal it even to a greater level in your life and in your words. So we spoke these declarations. We spoke these declarations and I'm going to speak them as often as I can over a, as, a, as a declaration of faith over Faith Chapel, over your lives and, and over your life on Facebook also. I'm going to speak these declarations that this year we will see the kingdom of God come, the will of God done in 2021.